Babe, you want to go upstairs and, you know? Well, I'm currently feeding a baby. I can work with it. Oh my gosh. And I'm so tired. It seems like you're just always tired lately. Yeah, well, let's get into that. Hey, I'm Andrea Warnock. I'm Nathan Warnock. And you've joined us for Marriage Monday on the Marriage by Design podcast. And this is a time where we get to talk to you about God's design for marriage and where we see marriage in the Bible, what God says about marriage, and how we live that out practically. That's right. A little bit of a shorter episode uh, today, but we're going to talk... get to your Valentine's Day plans. That's exactly right. It is Valentine's Day today. Times or times? Uh, Valentine's. (laughs) It is Valentine's Day today. And as you can see... Uh, and some of you have been around us long enough to remember the last baby that we had that routinely made appearances. our guest appearances on our podcast. Yeah, but so if you're watching, you can see we've got a, a babe with us today. That's right. Easton Rebel. And I'm sure he will be in plenty of our videos over the next coming months. Yeah, because they're never predictable. That's right. Like babies are. That's right. But today we're going to have a little bit of a shorter episode. And uh, Andrew, I'm going to kind of let you take it, babe, because yep. you kind of had... Uh, feeling of what you wanted to talk about a little bit today. So without further ado, do it. (laughs) Okay. So Nathan and I were part of a relationship event this weekend at our church. They did an evening on Friday where we were talking about marriage and relationship and how, um, yeah, it was good. Some really great, yeah, some really great things with that. And we had an opportunity to talk about sex. Uh, is that a surprise? Which was, but Twice. it was good. Re- really, it was good. It was. I mean, I felt like the Holy Spirit, you know, bailed us out, which when you're, at least when you're dealing with me, that's always a positive thing um, because uh, it's a difficult thing, guys, to talk about sex. You guys know that um, because it is a divisive thing. So that's more of just a praise report than anything else that I felt like. We were able to clearly communicate the message in a short amount of time, and um, so it was good. Nathan's good at that sort of stuff, so well, you he were did good too. Great. It was great. Um, so there was a. So what I want to talk about is something that was said, and it was a two-minute thing, maybe, of the whole five-hour event that just struck me and mm-hmm. has been rolling around in my head since, and I just wanted to pass it on. So. That's great. There was a Q&A session that we had as part of this event, and one of the, the first question that was asked was something about in-laws. And then the next question that was asked to this panel, we weren't a part of the panel, um, there were some great people on this panel with lots of marriage experience and relationship experience, yep. and yep. Um, a couple singles out there too. Anyway, um, the question that was asked was... What do I do when, how do I strike a balance between one spouse that's always in the mood or routinely in the mood for sex and another spouse that is not in the mood or tired or touched out uh, or whatever the case may be? How do I strike that? Do I just do it because that's what I have to do? Or should the spouse that is pursuing me sexually be understanding of that too, or what's the right balance? There? Yeah, and there was some talk about like, is it okay to withhold when I don't feel like it, kind of a thing. And we've right. talked about that on this channel. So, but one of the things that um, <clears throat> our associate pastors or executive executive, executive pastor's, pastor's wife. wife said is, and she's one of those women who doesn't speak very often but when she does it's deep it's usually pretty yeah it's deep and you usually should be listening well right so anyway she said you know she's got so she's got three little kids at home and she was saying that's hard when i have three little kids and i'm running after them and she's homeschooling and there's just there's a lot of energy output during the day right and a lot of a, a lot of 
yeah, being touched out and, and talked out probably and all that sort of thing. So what she said then is she has recently realized or, or God has, has spoken to her that she needs to conserve energy to be able to give the energy to her husband, you know, later in the evening, because one of the things they were saying is it's so hard when we're, we're trying to be intimate or trying to have sex or whatever later, you know, at night, that's the normal time, especially when you've got kids at home and it's not like your husband can come home from work and you can get to it that the kids are around. Right. So you could, but you would go to jail. (laughs) So, uh, you know, it, it, it can be hard for whatever circumstance you're in, you are at in right. life when the right. busyness of life adds up during the day and then the even, the night comes around and you're like, oh, one, one or maybe both of you are saying, I'm so tired. Right. And there's lots of people that are, excuse me, that are in that phase of life. And yeah, that's right. so she was saying, you know, I think she was the one that was saying, Partially, you need to get creative about not always having sex at night or not always trying to have those intimate moments with each other at night once the kids are in bed. But but also, she has realized she needs to be wise about conserving energy so that she has the energy to give to her husband. And I just thought, man, that's such a word of wisdom that I wanted to get out there. And sure, that's, it sounds great. And so what's been rolling around in my head is, is that, but also how do I do that? How do I conserve my energy? Not just, not just physically, but emotionally and the touch part of me and all that sort of thing. How do I do that during the day while also giving to my kids what they need? Right. And I don't, I haven't arrived at some like really great answer of that, but but it was such an inspired answer she gave that I know that that wisdom will come from the Lord. And some of that, too, can be telling your spouse, maybe when they come in the door, it, like, I want to have something to give to you later tonight. I'm really tired. I want to go take a 20-minute nap. Or I want to take a, a, yeah. a, a bath for a while and sure. just be by myself and not have anybody touching me except water. Right. <laughs> I'll, or I'll watch. <laughs> what? So I'm just I'm just throwing some suggestions out. And um <laughs> and as the the spouse who has maybe been away or right. has more energy or whatever the thing is, whatever your situation is, give that that spouse that's drained the right. time that they need to get yeah. away so that then they can invest in you. You know, right. marriage is always like a give and take. Right. For our whole lives. And so, That's right. and so realizing, you know, she's, she, or in our case, it would be she, cause I'm the one with the kids all day, but, um, I'm the one who is usually more drained than Nathan is because he has more energy. I don't know. But, so I'm going to say she, you know, realizing she's, she's trying to build up, build up some energy or build up some time alone or whatever so that she has something to give to me. Right. And that's such a huge blessing that she's wanting to do that. And so she needs some time away or whatever that looks like. Maybe, maybe for the, for those people who are staying home with their kids or whatever, you can take a quick nap in the afternoon when the other kids are napping. I've had some, I've felt guilt about that in the past and then realized because I have older kids that are awake and, I want to invest in them too, but realize too that taking a twenty minute nap is not going to not not going to hurt anybody. It, or um, you know, today I'll take a nap and tomorrow I'll play a game with my older kids while the younger are napping or whatever that is. So um anyway, just just realizing I need to try to conserve some energy and conserve my my emotional output or whatever with some things in order to really give to my spouse later. Yeah. And at the end of the day, aren't we really talking about priorities here? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was one thing that, that Jerrica did such a good job of making a point of when she was answering this question is 
making a point that, you know, at the end of the day, this is a priority issue. Right. And look, you can't just or shouldn't just shut your kids in the TV room and let them watch TV all day so that you have energy at the end of the day. But there are so many people where that's not the issue. The issue is that they've allowed their homes and their marriages to fall into a child centric situation. And the kids are sucking everything out of the house, Mm -hmm. including the energy of the mom or dad or both. Um, And it undermines this whole intimate, intimate relationship that we're designed to have as a couple. Um, And I mean, really, that that is that is a priority issue. Yep. Um, right, because our priorities as married people should be God first, right. and then our spouse, and then our children. And if you're not making your spouse a priority, that's it doesn't matter the phase of life. If you're not making your spouse a priority, you, your priorities are discombobulated. Right, and, and a marriage without sex is not a healthy marriage. I mean, just, just period. I mean, that, that, that kind yeah. of sexual intimacy is critical um, to a marriage relationship being what a marriage relationship was designed to be. And the irony is, at the end of the day, the most important thing that we can give our kids is a God-centered, God-honoring marriage. Yeah. Um, right. And so when we think we're doing what's best for our kids, but we're undermining that intimacy in our marriage, we're actually harming the kids in the long run. Yeah. And remembering, too, that, yes, one or both of us may be tired, and it doesn't have, but but the output is not, a, we're not looking at two, having to do a two-hour marathon sex session, you know? Right. It, <laughs> you know, I think so, I think so often about people who are saying, I'm just tired all the time. We don't, we don't have much of a sex life because I'm just so tired by the end of the day and, and saying, yeah, but you're too tired for 15 minutes. Right. There's a, there's a saying by, it was originally by Emerson Egridge's wife. Um, is at least where I first heard it. Um, but it was repeated in this relationship event. It's so good. Uh Um, and, she was at a point, as she tells the story, and he, uh, Emerson Egrich is the one that does love and respect. If you've ever been through that, if you haven't, I'd highly encourage it. It's a book, and there's a, there's a study series as well, the video series. But she shares in that video series that she went through a season where her husband's sex drive greatly exceeded her own, and she had mentioned this or lamented it to her mom. And her mom wisely responded to her and said, Honey, why would you deny him something that brings him so much joy and takes so little time? (laughs) And it's funny, but it's true in a lot of ways. Um, And the other thing, and and we've done this, there have been times where, you know, I've pursued you sexually and what did you tell me? I mean, this this sound, might this sound has, funny, but it's this should be free. There's somebody listening that this is going to be freeing to. This has seriously come out of my mouth. Not all the time, but on some rare occasions. I'm just so tired. Is it okay if I just lay here and you do your thing? Right. And... <laughs> And I know Andrea well enough to know, like, she once once we kind of get into it, she gets into it a little bit. But here's the thing. If I'm uh, that tired, right, yeah, I'll get into it, it. Right, but here's the thing as as a guy. I don't care. Yeah, that's what he said. He's like, right. that's fine. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> I mean, look, now, would it be different if it was if every time? Yeah, sure. because it would be easy for me, the human part of me, to fall into this feeling of, like, well... Do you always just want to lay there to get it over with? And not, you know, it would be easy to go down that path, but you don't do that all the time. So, should there be freedom there to sometimes go like, "Hey, I'm just really tired, and I'm my mind is willing, but the flesh is weak, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just if you can carry the lion's share of the work, then I'm willing." Yeah, and that's meaningful to me, and that's honoring to me. Mm. Um, so I pre- I always appreciate that, you know, and and it makes us laugh. And, yes, and it we does. have sex anyway. Yes, which makes me laugh. <laughs> and I want to flip this too, about not being about sex. Yeah, about being about connecting like emotionally, yeah, intimately, but emotionally, 
if if you are the spouse who is like doesn't need much of that, yeah. but you have your your other the other spouse does, and you're thinking I'm so drained by the time by the end of the day, or I'm so I my ears are just burning. I've heard it from my kids. I've heard it from my employees. Whatever. By the end of the day, I have nothing more to give emotionally. I can't. I don't want to talk about anything. I don't want to mm-hmm. listen to anything. I'm done. That's that's not right either. Right. And you should be conserving, finding a way to conserve your emotional energy. Right. Or find a way to recharge. Um, it doesn't have to be every day, of course, but but enough. Often enough that you're prioritizing your spouse and your marriage so that you can connect intimately in an emotional way and have those deep conversations and listen to each other and and that is sewing into your marriage and it's it's important just like sex is important too. Yeah, let me step in on that a little bit because I tend to to hear we tend to hear that this seems to be more of a guy issue Mm -hmm. um when and this is not the case for everyone but a a large number of the people that we meet with the the mom the wife stays home or works maybe part-time and her husband works more full-time right again not everybody of course but i'm just talking kind of in generalities um and what we find is that it can tend to be the the husband that comes home tired from just the stress like emotionally tired from the stresses of a work day and just wants to watch tv or play with the kids and hang out and this is where we really can get into a bad situation in marriage because the guy doesn't want to put in the effort for the emotional intimacy connection with his wife who's like in your case, has been home where the closest to adult conversation that you get is talking to an 11-year-old. Mm-hmm. And Jackson's great, but he's not an adult. Um, and a lot of that conversation you have with him has to be disciplining and you know just things that you have to do with kids. Um, and so for me to then come home and just not really want to have any kind of intimacy with you because I'm tired from the day is just as wrong as you never leaving capacity physically or emotionally for sexual intimacy. So it's a two-way street here mm-hmm. um, that that is intimacy within marriage, and they're both important. And uh, we haven't spoken a lot about the Bible um, in this particular episode, but that is biblical. So when you look back at Exodus, when Moses led the people out of Egypt, remember uh, Moses' uh, wife, her dad came to uh, Moses and people were coming to him with their issues and Moses was working them out, right? For all these million plus people that were there wandering in the wilderness with Moses at the time. And uh, his father-in-law came to him and said, you got to stop doing this because mm-hmm. you're just going to wear yourself out. And it doesn't say this is the case, but I've known enough dads of daughters to think that probably part of his thought process on that was you have nothing left to you give. got nothing left to give by the time you get home mm-hmm. um and so wisely moses then set up sort of a council of men to handle that a it's, the same, it's council. the same thing yeah it's the same thing right we've got to leave capacity for our spouse that's got to be the priority right yeah so that's all we had to say i just wanted to to get that wisdom out there. I thought it was so great. And again, something that's still rolling around in my head and figuring out how to do practically, but one, but something that I'm excited to, to ask God about and have him give me that some more of that wisdom. So right. from, from thanks, what babe. Jerica said. That's so, great. Yeah. That's great. Uh, thanks for joining us. Happy yeah. Valentine's day. Hopefully right. you've got some fun things planned with your family or your spouse. And we'll catch you for Family Friday this week. It's going to be um, about teaching kids to be includers. So hope to see you then. Until then, have a great start to your week. And remember, God is for your marriage.
Hey, thanks for joining us on Marriage by Design. If you were impacted by this video, like it by hitting the thumbs up below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And once you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when new episodes release. Excellent. Also, one of the huge pillars of our show is interactivity between us and you. So we would love you to comment down in the comments below if you have thoughts about this video or if you have questions or other things you'd like to, like to see considered in the future. In addition, if you'd like, you can email us. That's marriagebydesignpodcast at gmail.com. We're also on Instagram at marriagebydesignpodcast, or you can find us on Facebook by searching Marriage by Design Podcast. Finally, if you want to, you can tweet at us. We do have a Twitter account. That is at marriagexdesign. Thanks, and have a great day.